Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of Java 101. In this episode, I'm going to teach you guys about generics and autoboxing. These are two very important concepts in Java uh, that you've certainly used before but may not know by name. Uh, consider this line ArrayList string str is equal to new ArrayList string. This line right here uses generics. You just probably didn't know it. This string inside of the diamond brackets is called a type parameter and it is applied to this particular array list. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to use generics in your own classes and methods and then I'll show you some other things like bounding or the types and wild cards and other things and then I'll also quickly go over auto boxing. So to begin, we're going to go ahead and write a useless class. This is going to be called the box class, and it's going to be a class that stores one object. It's essentially like the array list, but it's only capable of storing one object. You can't store uh, multiple objects, so you would never use it. But um, here's what we're going to do. We have just a plain old public class box. We're going to have our private object, because it can be any object, so we don't know. We're just going to make it object, uh, called object, public box, takes in object, object. Uh, and then we're going to say this dot object is equal to object. And then we're going to say public object, get object, return object. So all this does here is it has a uh, constructor and a getter. So let's go ahead and actually make a box. So let's say box box is equal to new box uh, and then let's say hello this is a string uh, so this box would contain uh, the string hello. Now if I try to access this like box dot get object this is going to return an object so if I were to try to say string str is equal to box dot get object this wouldn't work and I would have to cast it like that. If I went ahead after and printed out the string, you'll notice that it should still work. Hang on one second. Let's go ahead and let it run. So it does still print out hello, as you can see. Uh, but I had to do this, like, casting, which is kind of weird. And uh, with generics, you can change that. So we're going to actually go into that box class that we just wrote, and we're going to apply... Uh, generics, we're going to have a type parameter to it. Um, so then what you can do is you can tell, instead of just being a generic box, it's a box of type string. So then I could say string str is equal to box that get object, and I don't have to worry about the casting. And then if I also were to have a setter, like if I were to call right now box.set to be 1, then or if I said box dot set object, and if I had a setter, then that wouldn't really make sense because the box should hold a string and, and not an integer. So um, this is what generics can do. So back, let's go over to the box, and we're going to go ahead and add a type parameter. The way that you do this is in your uh, class header, right after the name, you type in diamond brackets, and then inside of there, you pick a letter and type it in. Um, so now I've just added the type parameter T. Uh, there is a specific pattern for these. T means type, and obviously we're going to use type because it's a box of some type of object. There's E, which means element, and that's what's used in the array list, I believe. There's K, which is key, and V, which is value. Those are used in, like, hash maps that have a key and a value. Uh, if you look it up, there's just, like, a list of a couple different standards. But you could just, you could call this whatever you wanted. I could call it hello if I really wanted to, but it doesn't make too much sense to call it that. I'm going to call it T for type. So now what happens is when I instantiate a box, I have the option, and I should, specify the type. And I can now use this T in place of objects. So we can go ahead and replace all of these different... That's locked up. I can go ahead and replace all of these objects with T. So as you can see, all I've done is replace the three instances of object with T. So now if we go back here, you'll notice that I'm getting this yellow line uh, because it's asking me to 
um, add a generic type. If you don't, it's called a raw type, and then it just defaults to object. But this is not the only reason why you're allowed to do this is because when generics were introduced, they needed to be backwards compatible with older versions. Like in like in the old versions of Java, the ArrayList class uh, could not take a type parameter. Uh, now, when it could, there needed to be the ability for older programs to work, but it's there's absolutely no reason, really, why you would not want to specify. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and say that it is a box of type string. Make sure we do that right. So I'm now saying that the box is of type string, and I can remove this now because, as you can see, get object returns a string because I said it's of type string. Now, likewise, if I were to make this a box of type integer, then you'd see I get two errors. First of all, since the box is of type integer, I can't give it a string as the object. I have to give it an integer. And second of all, as you can see, I can't convert from integer to string uh, because then get object will return type integer, not type string. So that is why generics are useful, and that's why you would want to have them in your class. Now, of course, this is just a very simple um, example that you would probably never want to use, but there are some uh, examples where you would want to use generics. All right, the next part that we're going to do is um, uh, bounding of generics. So uh, let's go ahead and create another class called number box. So a number box. Uh, is going to work the same as a box, but it'll only take in a number. Now, for those of you that don't know, um, there are al there's already a number class defined in Java, and it's inherited by the integer class, uh, the double class, the float class, and a couple of other uh, different classes. Um, so, first of all, let's just go ahead and say this is number box of t. Again, we need to know that. Uh, this is going to extend a box of type t. Now, of course, we need a public number box, which takes in the object and then supers it. Um, so then we'll super object. I can't spell. Oh, boy. OK. Um, and then, good. So now, we want this number box to only be able to take in a number. Um, so what we can do here is we can we can bind it or we can uh, give it a parameter. We can say this t extends number. Now what this means is when I go to give it um, this type parameter, whatever I give it needs to extend number. And you can see that number is a class in Java.lang that represents a number and it's inherited by a bunch of other classes. So um, now we have this number box. Let's go ahead and try using the number box. So let's say that I go ahead and say uh, number box string number box is equal to new number box string. Um, you'll notice that I get an error, and oh, I have to give it a value, so hello. Okay, so now if we take a look here, you'll see bound mismatch. The type string is not a valid substitute for the bounded parameter t extends number of type number box t. What that means is I've bound this type parameter, so whatever it is, it has to extend number. And since string doesn't extend number, it's invalid. However, if I were to do, let's say, integer and change this to be 1, then you'll see that it does work because integer extends number so therefore it fits within the bounds that I specified it does extend number now the reason why you would want to do this is first of all to make sure that people are doing uh, putting in the correct values with a box it doesn't matter but if you have a box that's specifically for numbers you want to make sure that, they, that the uh, person using it would only put in numbers you can't just assume that they would know you want to be extra sure and the second reason is because if I say that whatever this T is has to extend number I can then assume that it's a number so if I have um, public int get int value and I say return object dot or I guess actually I have to make object be protected so we'll make or no I can just use the getter so we can say return get object dot int value notice that this int value method comes from number 
but I can do that because I said that t has to extend number, so therefore I can assume that it's a number. So with the number box, I have the ability to get the int value, which just returns the int value method that's specified in number right there. Uh, and again, it's not a useful method, but I'm just showing that since I say that t has to be a number, I can then use all of the methods inside of number with that. Uh, so that's all for that part. Next, let's go ahead and do um, generics and methods. You can have methods that take type parameters, and the way that you define them is rather strange. So we're going to go ahead and make a static method that takes in an object and just returns a new box. It's just an alternative to using the constructor. You could use a static method. So we're going to go ahead and write public static. Then you go ahead and write in your type parameter. This is going to be t. Then you write in your return type, which is going to be box of whatever type is given, and then we're going to say of t object, and then return new box object. So this looks, or sorry, we need to return new box of type t of object. Now I know that this looks really weird, but basically what we're saying here is this has a type parameter called t, the return type is a box of whatever type parameter is given to the method, and then it takes in a t object. This is not related to this t, it's its own t right here. And then it returns a new box. So let me go ahead and show you guys this part. So we're going to go ahead and say um, box string new box is equal to box dot of hello. And if you take a look here, you'll notice that it automatically knows that it's a string because since this takes in a t object and I gave it a string, it then assumes that I'm that I want it to have a string, and then it gives me a box of type string, which is cool. If you want, if you need or want to do it manually, you would put in the type parameter right before the name of the method. So after the dot, you put in string, and then you'd write of or whatever the method is. So that's how you would do it. Um, inside of a method. I know it looks a little bit confusing with like, you know, all these T's, uh, but that's how it would work. And I think that the last thing that you need to know about generics... Oh, actually, one thing before we get to autoboxing. Um, Java has this weird system called type erasure, and to best demonstrate it, notice that I can't do this. If I try to say t, so I have this type parameter called t. Let's say I make a box of type string. This should be string string str is equal to new string, right? Well, as you can see, I can't instantiate the type t. The reason that this is is because of generic, uh, not generics. The reason is because of type erasure. When I compile my code to run it, Java actually removes these type parameters and replaces them with objects. So the way that I first showed you where we had an object and then we had to cast it to a string, uh, that's actually what happens. Generics are only provided um, at, for the person who's writing the code. After that, uh, they're no longer valid. So you can't instantiate this because it actually disappears and it goes back to the way that it was before without the type. Uh, it's the same reason why you can't say t, t array, or t array, called t array, is equal to new, sorry, new t array 1. You can't instantiate, or you can't create a generic array of t because the t is erased um, at compile time and it's no longer there. Uh, that part might have been confusing, but you don't really have to worry about it as long as you uh, just know that you can't instantiate uh, this type. You can instantiate a type parameter. That's all you have to know. The last thing that I'm going to show you is autoboxing. And for this we're going to go ahead and use the number box. Uh, now in my computer science class that I took, when we were learning about array lists, I mentioned autoboxing and then uh, people started laughing because they thought it sounded like two robots boxing each other. Uh, but autoboxing is actually uh, an important thing to know. Um, First of all, let's just quickly talk about boxing. Um, if, I, if I go ahead and define an integer, like int i is equal to 0, I can do that. Now, for each primitive type, there's also a wrapper class. So this integer, not int, but integer class, you can see that there's all these methods. This is called a wrapper class, and it's the class version of the primitive type. And because of boxing, I could say integer i is equal to 0 using the capital. I could also say new 
integer 0, but just by putting 0, uh, this still works. And the reason why this still works is because of boxing. When it gets this 0, it automatically puts it into a new integer. Uh, in the same way, I could say int i is equal is equal to new integer 0. This is called unboxing. It receives the wrapper class, this wrapper class, and it automatically takes out the value from the wrapper class and sets it. This is unboxing. Now, auto boxing and auto unboxing work like this. I can't say that I want a number box of type int because int is a primitive type and it needs to have a class. But because of auto boxing, auto boxing was created because of uh, this issue. But I could still say int i is equal to number box dot get object because um, since get object returns an integer, it's automatically um, boxed over to be the primitive type int. And if I had a setter, then I could say you know number box dot set object to be 0, and that would work because the 0 would be automatically boxed into the wrapper class of integer, and then it would be put in. So that's why you can use capital I integer and lowercase int interchangeably because of uh, boxing and auto boxing. So that's all for this video. I'm sure it was probably uh, a little bit confusing, uh, but generics is one of my favorite parts of Java. I think it's really cool the way that the system works. Um, if anything was unclear or you have any questions or there's even something about generics that I forgot to mention, uh, just leave a comment. Uh, but otherwise, I think this is pretty much all you need to know if you ever decide to use generics in your own programming. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I'll see you guys soon with some more coding videos. Bye, guys.